Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. This time, ang lecture po natin ay about measures of central and non-central location. Let's start with measures of central location. Once the data are available, then the researcher, teacher, or ang data analyst will describe or characterize the data in terms of summary measure. The summary measure is a single value that we compute from a collection of measurements to describe the set of data. Examples of these summary measures are mean, median, and mode. Let's start solving mean, median, and mode for ungrouped data. So may ibang formula ang pag-solve ng mean, median, mode sa ungrouped data and group data. For ungrouped data for mean, Ang mean is represented by the symbol x bar. So this could be read as the summation of x sub i, where i starts from 1 to n, all over n. n is the number of scores. Let's have example. Given the set of test scores, we have 20, 30, 10, 40, and 50. If you are asked to solve for the mean, all we have to do is just get the sum of all the values. We have 20 plus 30 plus 10 plus 40 plus 50. Then divide all of this by the number of scores, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5. The sum of this is 150 divided by 5 is equal to 30. Therefore, the mean score is 30. How about the median? For median, let's say, for example, the given set of values are 20, 30, 40. 10, 40, and 50, what is the median? The first step is we have to arrange the data from the lowest value to the highest value. The lowest value is 10, followed by 20, followed by 30, followed by 40, and 50. We have to count the number of scores. If the number of scores is odd, all you have to do is just the number of scores plus 1 divided by 2 to locate the the mid-gen. So we have in our example, we have 5 plus 1 equals 6 divided by 2 equals 3. Therefore, the third observation is the mid-gen, which is equal to 30. We have 1, 2, 3. This is the mid-gen. Now, just in case the number of scores is even, let's say, for example, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. May isa pang score, let's say 60. The mid-gen is we have to get the arithmetic mean of the two middle values. So we have to add 30 and 40. So 30 plus 40 is 70 divided by 2 is 35. The median is 35. How about the mode? The mode is an observation or it's a score that occurs most often or ang pinakamarami. Example, given data 10, 5, 15, 8, 10, 12, 20 and 9. What is the mode? If we check the data, 10 occurs twice, all the rest once only. Therefore, the mode is 10. Another example set of data 10, 5, 15, 8, 10, 12, 20, and 5. In this case, 10 and 5 are the number of occurrences. Therefore, there are two modes. The modes are 10 and 5. Hence, it is possible to have two or more modes in the set of data or no mode at all. If there are two or more modes, that is known as polymodal. If only one mode, unimodal, two modes, bimodal, three modes, trimodal. For group data, we have another formula, a different formula from the ungrouped data for mean. For group data, the data is already presented in frequency distribution format. This is the formula x bar is equal to the summation of the product of the frequency and class mark. Then the sum of this divided by number of scores. Let's have example. Let, let us use the same example in my previous video in which 64 parents of students at a certain school in Infanta Quezon. We have this. This is already given. 
recall ah, paano na compute ang frequency o paano na determine ang frequency for each class interval. Now in the formula, we need to have frequency and we need to have class mark. Therefore, we need to have entry for class mark. This one is the class mark. Recall how to solve for class mark. I divide lang ang lower limit. Ano, I add ang lower limit at upper limit. Then divide by 2. So 21 plus 27 is 48. Divide by 2 is 24. The same process for the second class, third, and so on. So these are the entries for class mark. We already have the values of the variables here. All we have to do is just multiply frequency and class mark. We have 7 times 24, 11 times 31, 13 times 38, and continue the process. We have the result 7 times 24 is 168, 11 times 31 is 341, 13 times 38 is 494, 11 times 45 is 495, 8 times 52 is 416, 10 times 59 is 590, and 4 times 66 is 264. If we check the formula, we have to add all these values. Adding all these values will result to 2,768. And 2,768 will be divided by N. Our N is 64. Therefore, we have 2,768 divided by 64 equals 43.25. That's the mean. How about the median? Formula for the median, this one is the lower class boundary of the median, median class plus C, which is the class size, the numerical difference between the lower and the upper limit. We have here the N divided by 2. Then the value of the less than cumulative frequency before, because of this negative sign, before the cumulative frequency class. Then we have frequency of the median class. Let's have an example. So we already have the frequency and the class mark, but we need to have less than cumulative frequency and lower class boundary. These are the entries for lower class boundaries. Recall how to determine the lower class boundaries. You just subtract 0.5 here and add 0.5. So this one is 21. It will become... 20.5, and this one would be 27.5. And just to continue the process here. Less than cumulative frequency, recall how to determine the values here. The first entry here would be the first entry in the less than cumulative frequency. And we have 7 plus 11, 18, 18 plus 13, 31, 31 plus 11, 42, plus 8, 50, plus 10, 60, plus 4, 64. We already have the values needed in solving for the median. Now let's let us start solving the median. In solving for the median, kailangan natin ilocate mo na si median class, itong MD. Paano ilocate si median class? You divide the total number of scores by 2. In this case, in our example, the total number of scores is 64. Divide by 2, it's 32. And you locate 32 in the less than cumulative frequency. We have 7, 18, 31, but we need to have 32. Therefore, 32 is located here. This one is the median class. Dito na tayo kukuha ng mga values na substitute natin sa formula. Let's go back to the formula of median. We need to have lower class boundary of the median class. This one is the median class. Ang lower class boundary is 41.5. That's it, 41.5. And plus C, the value of C is the, the class size. We have 21 to 27, the class size is. We have 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. The class size is 7. We have here 64 divided by 2. That's 32. This one is 31. So I'm going to 31. One is the median class, so the value before the cumulative frequency is 31. It's 31. And the value of this, this one is the median class, and F is the frequency, so the value is 11. 
Then 32 minus 31 times 7 divided by 11 plus 41.5 is equal to 42.14. And the last is mode. How to solve for mode? The formula. The same sa median, you cannot solve the median without locating the median class. Ang mode, you cannot solve mode without locating the modal class. Paano i-determine ang modal class? You go to the frequency. The class interval that has the highest frequency is the model class. In this case, 13. Therefore, this one is the model class. That one. Model class. Then we just substitute the values. The lower class boundary of the model class is 34.5. And C is still the same, 7. And this one is the frequency of the model class. What is the frequency of the model class? It is 13. And this one is the frequency before the model class. Ito yung model class, ang frequency before is 11. This one, we already have a value of this, which is 13. We just multiply it by 2. We already have a value of this, which is 11. Let's see. We don't have a value of this. This one is the frequency after the model class. So ito yung model class after is 11. So that is still 11. Then 2 times 13, 26, minus 11, 15, minus 11, it's 4. So the answer for this is 4. 13 minus 11 is 2. So 2 divided by 4, it's 1 half. 1 half of 7 is 3.5. 3.5 plus 34.5 is 38. That's the mode. So we're done with the measures of central location. Let's review. There are three different methods in solving for the measures of central location. We have the mean, the median, and the mode. Bye bye yung formula pag solve ng mean for ungrouped data and mean for group data. The same with the median. Iba yung process in determining the median for ungrouped data and determining the median for group data. And the same for mode. The different process yung pag determine ng mode sa ungrouped data sa group data. Let, let us proceed to another type of location. This time, location not necessarily located in the center. That's why it is called measures of non-central location or fractals. Uh, measures of non-central location or fractals are values below which a specified fraction or percentage of the observation in a given set must fall. We have three different kinds of non-central location or fractiles, percentile, decile, and quartile. Ang percentile, dividing the whole into 100 equal parts. Ang decile, dividing the whole into 10 equal parts. Quartile, dividing the whole into 4 equal parts. So ang percentile, we have P1, P2, P3, P20, P80, P90, P99, and P100. Ang decile, only D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, D8, D9, D10. So ang D9 is also equal to P90 in percentile. So D9 is also 90% sa percentile. Ang quartile, we only have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Q4 is the whole. D10 is the whole set of data. And P sub 100 is the whole set of data. So ang quartile is, ang Q1 is 25%. Um, Q2 is 50%, which is equal to D5, which is 50%, which is also equal to P sub 50. So if you're asked to determine the 80%, you may use quartile, decile, percentile. If you're asked to solve the 25%, you may use percentile, decile, or quartile. You will arrive the same answer. Now we will discuss kung paano isolve ang percentile, paano isolve ang decile, paano isolve ang quartile. Let's start with percentile, raw data, yung ungrouped data muna. There are only three steps na kailangang i-master. These three steps, applicable para sa percentile, decile, and quartile, ang first step. I-arrange muna ang given set of data from lowest to highest. Pangalawa, i-compute natin yung desired location. The formula, and the total number of scores, yung K, yung desired location, over 100 pag percentile, over 10 pag decile, over 4 pag quartile. 
And step number three, use the following rules to determine the kth percentile. Rule number one, kung ang result nito ay integer, ang integer yung whole number. Ang pag-determine ng value is yung location of that desired location plus the value of the next location divided by 2. If the result is not an integer, meaning my decimal point, then P sub K is equal to X sub C, where C is the closest integer greater than N K over 100. Let's have example. 30 senior high school students at PCU took an exam on quantitative analysis. Ito yung results ng scores. So the exam is good for 100 points. These are the scores of the exam. You are asked to solve P20 or P sub 20. First step, arrange the data from the, from the lowest to the highest. Second step, look uh, complete for the location. Therefore, our N is 30, our K is 20. So 30 times 20 over 100 percentile. So 30 times 20, 600 divided by 100 equals 6. This is the location, sixth location. But the condition is saying that if it is whole number or integer, the value of sixth location at value of seventh location, e add divided by 2, that's where the 20 percent is created. Therefore, P sub 20 is equal to sixth plus seven observations. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, which is 43 and 44. Therefore, we have 43 plus 44 divided by two is equal to 43.5. Therefore, 20% is located 43.5 and below. How many scores located below 43.5? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six students fall below 20%. And how many students fall on the upper 80%? We'll just subtract 80 by, uh, no, 30 by 6. So there are 24. What if instead of 30, only 29 students took the exam? So there are only 29 scores here. Find T20. First step, Arrange the data from lowest to highest. Second step, compute NK over 100. Our N this time is 29. Our K is still the same, 20. Then 100 because we are using percentile. 29 times 20 divided by 100 is 5.8. Let's go back to our rule. Second rule, if the answer of NK over 100 is not an integer. So we have to apply this rule. 5.8. The next whole number is 6. So we have the 6th location. Therefore, P sub 20 equals 6th observation. And this, the value of the 6th observation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is 43. Therefore, 20% of the scores are found 43 and 2. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. That's it. So we're done with ungrouped data. Let's start with. Group data. Now, for group data, we have to follow a specific formula. This We have this one. So, we are using the same term, lower class boundary of the P sub K class, then the C, and so on and so forth. The same. Let's have an example. Let's use the same example, the frequency distribution of the ages of 64 employees. We have here the frequency distribution given. And we have to locate P sub 28. How to locate P sub 28 class? We will multiply the total number of scores by 28%. So 64 times 0. 0.28. 64 times 0. 0.28 is 17 point. Let me check. You have 64. 64 times 0. 0.28. 17.92. So 17.92 locate that in less than cumulative frequency. So it's not here. So 17.92 is part of 18. So this one is the P sub 28 class. 
that one. Now, since we have located the P sub 28 class, all we have to do is just substitute that in the values. The lower class boundary is 27.5. The value of C, the class size is still the same, 7. And K over 100, this one is 28 times, no, 64 times 28 over 100 is equal to 17.92. And the value of the less than chromatic frequency before the P sub 28 class, the value of before this one is 7. And the value of the frequency of the P sub 28 class is 11. Then interpolate this one. The answer is 34.45 for P sub 28. About design. So the same formula, ang papalitan lang ay P nagiging D. And as I mentioned a way back, if you will use this side, change 100 to 10. And the rest are just the same. Let's have example using the same frequency distribution. Since this is this one is T8, so that's that is 80%. Just multiply 64, 64 times 0.8. So 64 times 0.8, which is 80%, the answer is 51.2. Then locate that one in the less than cumulative frequency. So we have 51.2. So this one is the D sub 8 class. Now, since we also we already have D sub 8 class, we will just substitute the values here. Lower class boundary is 55.5, this one. And the class size is still the same, 7. N K over 100, so N is 64 times 8 divided by 10 is 51.2. And the value before this class is 50. And the frequency of this one is 10. Then the answer is 56.34. And the last is quartile. If you have noticed, ang formula from P to D to Q, naging Q, and from 100 to 10 to or, and the rest are the same. Let us use the same formula and this uh, the same frequency distribution table and this time we'll be solving Q3. Q3 is 75%, so we have to locate Q3 class. We will multiply 64 times 0.75 equals 48. Locate 48 in the less than cumulative frequency. So 48 is part of this class. Now, since we already have the Q sub 3 class, we will now substitute the values. Lower class boundary is 48.5. And the class size is still the same, 7. Our N is 64 times 3 divided by 4. It's 48. The value of this, before, before 50, it's 42. And the value of this is the frequency, which is 8. And solve this one, 53.75. So we're done with percentile, decile, and quartile, both for group data and, and group data. Okay, so we're done with this. The measures of central location and measures of non-central location. Let us review. Uh, measures of central location mean, median, mode, uh, measures of non-central location, percentile, decile, and quartile. So wag niyong kalimutan na mag-subscribe sa YouTube channel ko para maging updated kayo palagi sa lecture series. That's all for now. Bye!